Every day in the USA, people find themselves in court. Our general civil cases are completed, except for Stephen Pontius versus St. Joseph County Sheriff's Department. And Rachel Britton, TJ Baker, Jason Bingaman. This has to do with a 2010 Harley Davidson motorcycle. And this matter is complicated. Uh, and I did not require Mr. Pontius to post a bond. He did file a petition regarding the impoundment of the motor vehicle. The case of Noel V. Ritzer can require, in fact, does generally require the person to post the bond. This case involves this 2010 Harley David motorcycle, which was reported as having been stolen from Wayne County. In fact, I believe was stolen from Wayne County. Um, Mr. Pontius uh, was the owner of this vehicle and uh, I'm not sure how he came to have possession of this, uh, but the sheriff's department impounded it because it was reported as stolen. Then it gets confusing after that, whether it is stolen or was stolen or whether Wayne County wants it. I don't know what the status of this is. So Mr. Pontius, we'll defer to you first and uh, I expect we're going to have to continue this hearing to another date to take more information under oath. But what's your position? My position is that something fishy is going on. All the information that I got from the police doesn't pan out. Nobody can verify it. And every as a matter of fact, everybody from Lieutenant Campbell in the Detroit to the supervisor for the district for the stolen vehicle department in Detroit. She said that they've never had that motorcycle in their, in their vehicle records. The, the insurance, the head insurance agent for Liberty Mutual says she don't have it in her records anywhere. And now uh, brokers towing says that Copart came and picked it up. Well, I called Copart and Copart said they didn't come get it. They said it's not well, who, is Co who is Copart? Copart is a salvage dealer that uh, buys things from insurance companies and then resells them at a different price, which is, I believe, what happens is they sold it. And then when they got the notice, because they were the last uh, the last person to have it legally registered, they can't, they, they, somebody, Either they came and got it and say they didn't, or they didn't come get it and brokers are saying they did. I don't know. But everything that I've been told doesn't line up. Nobody nobody can verify anything. And everybody's telling me the opposite of what the police are telling me. And I require my property back. I've got the All I've right. got the well let's nobody's under oath at this point. I think at some point we're gonna have to do that. But how did you acquire this motorcycle? I bought it. I bought it. I was going to fix it up for my son for a wedding present. And his new wife, it, she didn't want nothing to do with him. Well, being you, on a you, bought it, you bought it from who? I bought it from Matt Gillette. I've got all his information. I gave that to the police as well. All right. Where is he? He's in uh, Marshall, Michigan. Did he provide a title? He did not. There's your first mistake. Well, I did all the research beforehand. I, looked, I checked out the Secretary of State's website. They said it wasn't stolen anymore, but it was in the salvage vehicle database. That means it's been recovered. I checked with uh, the insurance, insurance motor carrier, insurance bureau, theft bureau, or whatever it is. I got it right here written down. One second. It's the National Insurance Crime Bureau. Um, They've got a web portal, and I did a VIN check on it. And again, it came back in their salvage vehicle database, not in their stolen vehicle database. So that's a recovery. 
that's been stolen and it's been recovered. Um, but from where, I don't know, because uh, Lieutenant Campbell from Detroit says they've never had that in their in their database in Wayne County. And uh, at first, I couldn't get anybody to tell me anything. I got stonewalled completely. I get, they, then they told me that they called Detroit and they verified that it was stolen. But I, when I called Detroit, they didn't have it in their records. Well, Detroit's not here. So right now that's all hearsay. Well, all right. Um, it's on my I'll affidavit go... and I need it to be rebutted. All right. Okay. I got you. Right on. Um, so let's defer to the under sheriff or who's I've, we've got, let's identify everybody. Deputy, uh, Britton is here. Her name is Rachel Britton. Um, she is with the sheriff's department. I think she's the one that actually seized it. The I lieutenant am. there, who is in charge of a lot of administrative uh, matters, is T.J. Baker. Also present is T.J. Harrington. We have to keep our T.J. straight. And uh, under Sheriff Jason Bingaman. And the sheriff's department kind of got in the middle of this. So... I saw something else come through that was, I don't know where it went, that shows, in fact, this vehicle was stolen. Deputy Britton, how did you come to seize this vehicle? Yeah, so on July 11th, uh, Josh Kramer had called into dispatch and asked for a deputy to respond because he was going to buy the motorcycle um, from Mr. Pontius, uh, and he knew that Sorry. there was a title. All uh, right, slow down a little bit. Okay, Back, I'm going to put you under oath. Mr. Pontius was not. Would you raise your right hand? You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give here will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes. All right. So someone called the department regarding yes. purchasing the motorcycle. Yes. Uh, Josh Kramer. Who's that He's, person? His name is Josh Kramer. All right. How do you spell that? Uh, Kramer is C-R-A-M-E-R. -E Josh is uh, basic spelling, J-O-S-H. All right. And they called the sheriff and said, uh, I want to buy this motorcycle, but it shows stolen? He Nope. He called dispatch and he asked for a deputy to come out because he was going to buy the motorcycle from Mr. Pontius. And he knew there wasn't a title. He just wanted it ran to make sure that it wasn't reported stolen before he bought it. Um, so then when I went there and I ran it, I didn't have any reason to believe that it would be stolen. Um, but then it did come back stolen out of Detroit. Um, Your Honor, I also, I hope you got the information, but I did have our um, ladies up front send an email with the lien paperwork um, that provided all of the records with the um, the motorcycle registration information, as well as the conversation between dispatch and Detroit Police Department that night. All right. Well, that documentation was emailed to the court on August 5th. Um, I directed it, be forwarded it to Mr. Pontius, but I don't know that it ever was. Please put this in on base and forward a copy to the defendant. It was put in on base. Not the uh, defendant. Is... Oh yeah, you're the plaintiff. Um, good point. You're the plaintiff, so maybe uh, maybe that's why it didn't get sent. You're the plaintiff. Uh, she said, at any rate, you didn't get it. So, uh, Deputy Britton, what does that documentation show? So this documentation is uh, the lien work, which is why I couldn't show it to you that day. Um, which so the registration holder as Liberty Mutual Insurance. Um, and then... It's also the complete conversation between our dispatch and um, the dispatch of Detroit Police Department showing that the vehicle was confirmed stolen uh, with Detroit Police Department uh, from 12-27-2020 
from the 11th precinct. Um, it gives the exact start, uh, desk supervisor who entered it and authorized it. Um, and then the conversation that shows that I'm out with the vehicle or with the motorcycle, given the VIN uh, that was on it and them responding that it was confirmed stolen, them asking questions, me responding, um, and then them uh, saying they wanted it and to that they were we would cancel it out of lien so that we could enter it as impounded. And they requested that you impound the vehicle. Yes. Uh, and what did you do? Um, I entered it as impounded and brokers towing came and uh, picked up the motorcycle. When was that? Uh, that was on July 11th. And I assume Mr. Kramer did not execute a purchase on the motorcycle. He did not. He had left um, in the middle of the conversation once he realized that it was uh, confirmed stolen. All right. And the title holder was Liberty Mutual Insurance? Yes. Please put the non-base forward to the defendant. Done. I believe Mr. Pontiot is the petitioner. Is that correct? Yes. So I believe it was forwarded to you on August 5th. Yeah, I, I didn't see it. I'm not saying it didn't come. I'm just saying I didn't see it. Okay. Would it come in mail? I believe I mailed it, yes. Yes, mailed. Um, nothing came in my mail. Um, all right. That's what we'll do for now. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So she was on top of it. She had the petitioner and the defendant straight, even if the judge didn't. And she then sent a copy to you. But anyway, what it confirms, Ms. Britton, is this motorcycle was stolen. So you impounded it at the direction of the Detroit Police Department. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, Detroit Auto Recovery is their who handles those things for them. They're a division of the city or the Wayne County Sheriff? Uh, the city, I believe, is the. There's the city is the one who entered it um, as stolen. Uh, confirmed with entry jurisdiction, Detroit Police Department, uh, 6300, if Auto Recovery Section, Detroit. So they just have their own stolen vehicle department, uh, I would assume. All right. So big city people stuff. <laughs> yes, as opposed to us small city people. So <laughs> this motorcycle was reported stolen from the Detroit Police Department. You have it. You have no title to it. You're attempting to sell it to somebody without a title. He was wise enough to have it checked out and it got impounded. So I'm it's trying to find it. All right. Let's stop for a minute. Mr. Pontius, will you raise your right hand? You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter is true to the best of your knowledge and belief. I affirm. All right. And swear or affirm is sufficient. Uh, what's your version? Okay, my version is I bought this motorcycle after doing a ton of research on it to find out that it was stolen and that it was recovered. If they don't issue a salvage title on a stolen vehicle, they wait till it's recovered and then they issue the salvage title. Okay, so I did all the research. I was okay with it after doing all my research. Two years later, when I go to sell it, I advertise it as once stolen and recovered. No title. Just the way I got it. I, he knew that. Uh, Josh knew that. He asked me if, it, if he could have the VIN, VIN numbers run. I said, absolutely. I, I just ran them. You know, I did, all, I did all the work. So come on. Well, when she ran it, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, it's it's a mistake in the computer, you know, because it, it was stolen. She, I told her it was stolen at one time, but it was recovered before she even ran the, the VIN numbers and that I didn't have the title. And uh, she came back, said it was still stolen. I said, well, it's got to be a mistake. Can you verify it? I didn't get a, a lot of uh, information from her at all. Just that all she would tell me was that Liberty Mutual was the, the owner and it was stolen out of Detroit. Okay. So I, I'm not going to argue with her. I let her take it. The next morning at nine o'clock in the morning, I was at the secretary of state's office. The, the clerk told me that it, she would get a flash if it was in their, in their system as stolen. 
nothing came back in her system is stolen. It was, and, and it, as far as she could tell, it wasn't stolen. Okay. I came home. I called the insurance company. I called all the way to Detroit. I ended up calling Boston to the head lady, the head honcho that runs the whole show. She said that motorcycle's not in their system anywhere. All right. So then after I talked to a minute, someone, every single thing you're telling me is hearsay. Somebody told me this. Somebody told me this. Somebody told me this. I well, don't that's know all you have to. I don't know what they said. She that's has a lean readout from Detroit Police Department saying this motorcycle is stolen. Please impound it. So okay. somebody talked to you and you talked to some unnamed person at some unnamed Secretary of State's office. They told you it didn't show up as stolen. Okay. Uh, and you did your research, but you never, ever had a title to it. It's because you, and, you can, uh, I can't register a vehicle in my name. You won't let me. Well, I, I won't. I didn't do it. The Secretary of State did, but right. this vehicle is stolen. It's Just a minute, stolen. Deputy Britton, you wanted to add something? I just wanted to uh, be clear that the reason that the Secretary of State wouldn't have it stolen in their system the next day is because it would have been removed out of the system as stolen that night. Um, just so that, Mr. Pontius, you were aware of how, why that would occur. So once you impounded it, it yes. came out of the system as yes. stolen. Then why didn't they put it in the abandoned vehicle database like the law says to do? Is it still not there? I don't appreciate All right, that. Go ahead, Mr. Pontius. I don't appreciate being cut off like that. I said, why haven't they put it in the abandoned vehicle database like they're supposed to do? Because as of this morning, when I checked, it's still not in there. They have seven days to do that. It's not in there. Broker's towing. I know it's hearsay, you know, but this is just a show cause and a, and a petition because I'm not done. I'll, I'll take this all the way. I don't care. I'm pulling bonds on this. I'm I'm upset. I want my property back. I know it's not stolen. Uh, I don't have a lot of sympathy for you. You did well, some research. You never had a title to this. Uh, somebody reported it as stolen at somewhere, and you're saying it was recovered and should have been abandoned and titleable, but it never was. Okay. So you've me, got this me, hot potato of a motorcycle that you don't have a title to. May you I try to sell it to somebody without a title, and they indicate it's stolen. So she impounds it at the direction of the Detroit Motor Vehicle Department, and it's impounded and it's taken to brokers. Now, one thing we don't know, according to you, according to brokers, somebody has already come and recovered this motorcycle. And we may need to get... Uh, Mr. Roberts here, Kevin Roberts, the owner of Brokers, to help us with that. Okay. Do you have any knowledge of that, Deputy Britton? I don't. Um, when Brokers came to tow it, I told them that it was going to be held for Detroit Police Department and wait for their contact. Um, Detroit that night had sent uh, dispatch a long list of questions for me, one of which was where it was going to be towed to, and I told them Brokers and gave them Brokers um address and phone number as well so that they would have that information. I don't know you if they still would have that. Before. You still have that that um, communication? I yes. Okay. I do. Hang on to it. I absolutely will. Right, was that included in the documentation you sent us? Yes. Which was allegedly mailed to Mr. Pontius. We'll have to follow up on that. Uh, Under Sheriff, uh, Lieutenants, do any of you have any knowledge of what happened to the motorcycle once it went to brokers? No, we don't. All right, we need a couple pieces to this puzzle. Mr. Pontius needs to have an opportunity to review that encrypted message that was sent to us. Uh, I don't want to put your email out over the uh, live stream here, Mr. Pontius, but we will 
uh, make sure you get it. She said it was mailed on August 5th to the Ash Road address, but to make sure it gets there, we'll email it also. And we need to find out from brokers what happened to the bike. Got his number right here. Well, I'll tell you what they told me. All right. They, they told me that Cole Park came and picked it up from South Lansing. He wouldn't give me any more information. He said he needed to speak. <coughs> I said, okay. I called Cole Park in South Lansing. They said they didn't come pick that bike up. They said they don't have it in their database anywhere. They don't have it. I talked to, to Matt Deloche. He's the assistant manager. I know it's all hearsay. I'm just telling you what I'm told. And that's the whole issue with this whole thing. Everybody's telling me something different than what someone else is telling me. And nobody's verifying anything. And I want to know why the police officer, the, the Lieutenant Campbell, the sergeant or the uh, supervisor of the stolen vehicle division for Detroit, Michigan, told me they didn't have that motorcycle in their database anywhere. And I want to know why... <coughs> Was that after it was after have? it was seized? After it was What's seized that? or before? After it was because stolen in 2020. They took it out of the stolen database once it was recovered. So I guess we'll follow up well, on that. Isn't there a record? But what do they erase it? I can't speak for a Detroit PD or what no. their protocol is, but I know that when you take something out of the computer, they they just change the status of it. They don't remove the record of it. Well, let's find a place to continue this too. How about Thursday, August 29th? Why can't we get to the bottom of this now? Excuse me? I said, why can't we get to the bottom of this now? As far as I'm concerned, I'm ready to sign an order dismissing your case. Uh, I want you to have an opportunity to look at the documentation that I saw that confirms that this motorcycle was confirmed as stolen and belongs to Liberty Mutual Insurance. Okay. It was seized lawfully by the deputy pursuant to that directive, and the true owner apparently has come and got it. Can I uh, ask you a question? So I'm continuing this for your benefit. Right, I just have one question. All right. If it was stolen in 2020, how come a new title was issued for it on October 1st, 2022? Just answer me that. What was the date? October 2022. Well, who was the new title issued to? I don't know. I can't. I, I don't have that information, but they, they can tell you that a new title was issued. Who? The Secretary of State. Yeah, the new title was issued to Liberty Mutual Insurance, and you don't eat while you're in court. Oh, I'm Gee sorry. I, I didn't realize. I'm sorry. I totally didn't. Didn't put two and two together. I apologize. Yeah, the new title was was issued to the insurance company who insured this stolen vehicle. That's and right. they're the ones that came and got it. Once they recover so, it, they get a new title, not before. They don't issue right. a sales well, so title. Do you want me to continue this? You want me to just pull the trigger on it today? No, I want I want you to you know, if you feel like you have to do that when, when my questions aren't answered, and I've got common sense questions that two and two makes four and nobody seems to be able to add up th then i don't understand i don't just because i didn't have a title for a vehicle i had the bill of sale i'm saying that i bought it i'm saying that i own it and i'm saying there was a new title issued to it and they don't do that until it's recovered all right well there are certain things that you can buy a piano a gibson guitar a uh, piece of furniture with a bill of sale and uh, that's proof of ownership. When something is titled like an automobile or a motorcycle, the lawful owner of it is whoever owns the title. Not never and you never had a title for this. So you and I are well, doing I two different state. kinds of math. Uh, you had a bill of sale. I could give you a bill of sale for the Empire State Building. That doesn't mean I have the authority to transfer it. Uh, this is a titled instrument. It's a motorcycle that requires to be titled under the Michigan Secretary of State. Well, it I have was full not the credit of the United States of America, so I can use any law in the in the, in the United States. 
You know, just because well, one state says it's title, I can I can still own a vehicle without having to register it to the state. Perhaps, but when it comes perhaps. to a legal fight, the person that owns it is the person whose name is on the title. So um, I've got. A I'm bill willing to. I'm willing to continue this to allow you to review those documents that detail the discussion about the vehicle being stolen in your defense, uh, arguably you haven't seen it. And to find out from Mr. Uh, uh, Kevin Roberts, what happened to the motorcycle. So if you're agreeable, I will continue it. If you're not, I'll just make a decision right now. Of course I'm agreeable if you with like that. All right, well, let's continue this to August 29th at 9.30. All right, why uh, why isn't it in the in the abandoned vehicle database? It was supposed to be done after before 10 days, or after 10 days. Uh, I don't know that I know the answer to that. Okay, well, I look, it's, it's a lot. And if it was stolen in 2020. It was entered it's as stolen. impounded, not as abandoned. Well, when, Okay, so when you get a vehicle that you can recover stolen, it's not classified as abandoned after that? That's what the special uh, motor vehicle theft laws I've got sitting over there say. No, I, I think you've got some. 257, 252 has all the abandoned vehicle statute information in it. But I'm not sure that this vehicle is abandoned. It's stolen. No, it's um, not. Well, it was stolen at some point. It was. Yes, it was. All right. We're going to continue this to August 29th at 930. Uh, okay. I will subpoena Mr. Roberts. Sir? Yes. Can Is there any way that we can get the Secretary of State's records? Because uh, I don't have the authority to get them. What records do you want? I want to know... Because at one point, if it was stolen, Secretary of State would know about it. If it was recovered, they would know about it. If it was issued a new title, and what kind of title it was issued, they, they would have done it. And all this plays a part of whether the motorcycle was recovered in the past or not. Unless right, it was well, stolen let, that's, twice. That's, that's not a... Has anybody ever run a title search on this motorcycle through yes. SOS? Yes. Well, just a minute. I'm asking the sheriff. Deputy Britton or any of the command staff, you know if that was ever done? Uh, the Secretary of State paperwork states title holder information, Liberty Mutual Insurance. I don't What's know about the date of that? previous title. The um, When I ran this, uh, oh, the title date, 10-5-2022. So that's when the new title was issued to Liberty Mutual Insurance. Yes, sir. So according to the Secretary of State, the title holder is Liberty Mutual Insurance. Yes, Your Honor. And that's also included in that information? That's correct. Does that answer your question, Mr. Pontius? Yeah, it just confirms it. Because they don't issue a new title until they recover the vehicle. They don't issue a title okay. on a stolen vehicle. Well, they didn't issue it to you. They issued it to Liberty Mutual Insurance Company. The fact that and they they're the title holder of this motorcycle. The fact that they issued it at all shows that it was recovered. And it's no longer considered stolen. All right. According to you, uh, you're not the okay. title holder. Yeah, Liberty right. Mutual according Insurance. Did you buy it from Liberty Mutual Insurance? No, I did not. I don't know where this Mr. Gillette got it. He's a... Uh, in the middle of this, um, he didn't get it from Liberty Mutual Insurance either. So it's clear this motor vehicle was stolen. A new title was issued to someone other than Mr. Pontius. It is a titled piece of property, and the person that owns a titled piece of property is the person that holds the title. So for your benefit, I will continue this so you can review those documents that you should have received, but I'll make sure that you do receive. And uh, and then I'll subpoena Mr. Roberts. All okay. right, I'm going to shut off the live feed. One week later.
This is actually entitled In Re, The Impoundment of a Motor Vehicle, a 2010 Harley Davidson motorcycle. The petitioner is Stephen Pontius, and uh, the respondent are Rachel Britton, TJ Baker, Jason Bingaman, uh, and the vehicle custodian is not the sheriff's department. It ultimately it became a broker's towing and storage. Um, I excuse Deputy TJ Baker from further proceedings in this matter because he really had very little to do with this. Uh, Deputy uh, Lieutenant TJ Harrington is present and under Sheriff Jason Bingaman. <clears throat> also Deputy Rachel Britton, who was here previously uh, and testified under oath regarding the impoundment of this motorcycle. Mr. Stephen Potty is the petitioner is here also by Zoom. Joining us today is Mr. Kevin Roberts. He is the owner and operator of Brokers Towing, uh, formerly of the city of Three Rivers, now, now just outside of Three Rivers. Mr. Roberts has testified in a number of these matters and he has a very good knowledge of the statute. Michigan MCL 257252. Uh, Mr. Roberts, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to start out by swearing uh, Deputy Britton, Mr. Roberts, and Mr. Pontius. Would you all please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. We heard from Mr. Britton and uh, De uh, Deputy Britton and Mr. Pontius about this motorcycle. Mr. Pontius had purchased it without a title, uh, contended it was a salvage vehicle. Uh, someone asked the central dispatch to send an officer to do a title search on it. And it was determined that the vehicle was stolen or reported stolen out of Detroit. Um, so the vehicle was impounded, ultimately taken to brokers. And this was all testimony taken on August 19th. I continued the matter until today because uh, there was some conjecture or speculation as to what actually happened to the motorcycle. So uh, I summoned Mr. Uh, Kevin Roberts to tell us what happened. So Mr. Roberts, did you come to be in possession of this Harley David motor Harley Davidson motorcycle that was impounded by the sheriff's department? Uh, we did, yes. Uh, what can you tell us about it? It was uh, it was brought in as an impounded vehicle. Uh, it's a stolen vehicle. Uh, request to be put on a hold um, inside for further processing by uh, Detroit Police Department. What was the date of that? I believe it looks like that came in on July 11, about uh, probably 10 o'clock at night or so. All right, what happened next? Oh, well, we, we brought it in, uh, we made room inside and we secured the vehicle and waited uh, patiently. Uh, While well, this thing took up our space for the Detroit Police Department to show up, uh, which uh, never happened, they decided that they had no interest in, in doing it. It was owned by, uh, I believe it was Liberty Mutual, and they, uh, they said it was up to Liberty Mutual what they wanted to do with it. Uh, I notified the St. Joe County Sheriff's Department. I talked to Jason, and I believe... Um, T.J. Baker was in the room at the same time and asked them if they had any further interest in it. And they said no, if Detroit uh, indicated to them that they, they weren't going to follow through with anything else on it. So we made contact with Copart uh, Auto Salvage Company. They'd been calling numerously to try to get the, get the vehicle redeemed. Um, so then they, they right, said, now, pick up. tell me who this is, Copart Auto Salvage? Uh, yeah, it's like an insurance auto auction. Um, the two biggest ones we deal with are Copart, and they, they deal with specific insurance <clears throat> insurance companies. And then there's IAA, insurance auto auctions. So 
your wrecked vehicles, um, stolen recoveries, flood vehicles, anything of an insurance relation typically goes through one of them. And it's like a, it's an auction, just like a used car auction when you first salvage. If you know, how did Copart find out about this? Uh, well, as soon as the owner of the vehicle was notified <clears throat> that it was redeemed, which the owner was Liberty Mutual, then Liberty Mutual would contact through Copart. So my guess is Detroit Police Department notified Liberty Mutual that your vehicle's been redeemed. So then that, that's what started the, the process. Negative. All right. Well, you'll have a chance to respond, Mr. Pontius. Oh, yes, um, all right. Um, then what happened next? <clears throat> uh, they came and redeemed the vehicle. They paid our cool. bill, picked it up, and it's gone. So Copart did on behalf of Liberty Mutual? Yeah, it was uh it was on August 7th. It was Scott's towing and salvage on behalf of Copart, who so picked it up about 1.30 in the afternoon. What was your tow and storage bill at that point? $3,638.80. And the vehicle was released, and that's the last you saw of it? That's correct. The law requires, as you know, Mr. Roberts, there was confusion, frankly. We've discussed this. The statute was contradictory, and the question of whether a <clears throat> petitioner had to post a bond or not was open-ended until the case of Noel V. Ritzer who went to the Michigan Court of Appeals and said a petitioner has to post a bond before they can have a hearing. Well, this vehicle has already been redeemed, paid for, and is gone. So I did not require Mr. Pontius to post a bond, but it would have been in the neighborhood of $3,600 before we would even have this hearing. So I, uh, I don't want to interject, but uh, under 257-252-F, the only one that can file a petition is an owner or the uh, secured party. So unless we have a bona fide owner, we shouldn't be here. Yes, there is a certainly a compelling argument to that effect. Uh, but here we are. Uh, all right. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Roberts? Mr. Pontius, anything you wish to ask him? No. Uh, Under Sheriff Bingaman, uh, anyone else? I was no, sorry. Sorry. All right. Uh, Mr. Roberts, thank you. It helped us get the full picture of what actually happened. And so now we know that. Uh, you're welcome to stay if you want to watch the rest of the proceedings. I know you're busy. I'll let you go. Well, and... I, I may be able to help you through this. All right. I don't know. I kind of watched uh, brief through the, the previous hearing you guys had. And the thing is all out of shape. Um, <laughs> yes. So all I, right. Well, I'll just leave if, you there for I'm now. Able to help you. All right. I will. I'll mute you for now, and then we'll just see where we go. All right. Um, we've taken lots of testimony. Uh, we've heard about uh, the fact that this vehicle was, in fact, reported as stolen. Uh, we discussed the fact that with motor vehicles, a title is required. And... Um, in this case, the title was in Liberty Mutual Insurance. Mr. Pontius, is there anything else you wish the court to know? Yes, there is. All right, well, I'll certainly hear what you have to say. Go ahead and tell me. Bill of sale. I have the bill of sale. I know it's not title, but it's a bill of sale. It's a receipt for the purchase of the property. Okay, and another thing, the day that we went to court last time on the 19th, I called Copart and he ran them, he ran them into their whole system. And he said, we didn't come pick up that bike. He said, we don't have that bike. 
I also called Liberty Mutual. I called them yesterday. They don't have any record of that bike, that motorcycle. Why is this? Can anybody hear me? I hear you. I don't have an answer to that question. Everything you just said is hearsay. If it's anyone hearsay. was here from Liberty Mutual to tell us that or Copart. I'm under uh, oath. Yeah, but that this doesn't happened. abrogate the rules of evidence. What someone else told you is hearsay. That's why I asked Mr. Roberts to come and tell us directly what happened. You have a bill of sale. And as we discussed this the last time, this is a motor vehicle. It's not a piano. Uh, it's it's not a piece of artwork. It's a motor vehicle. Uh, you, you have a bill of sale for a stolen motorcycle. I have a bill of sale. Uh, for and the motor. whole time you owned it, you never were able to obtain a title for it. Um, in fact, the title was in Liberty Mutual. Now, I was going to give you this, Mr. Pontius, because I got what I will refer to as ex parte communication from uh, someone that watched the hearing and uh, it was put in the file and I read it before I realized what it was. So it doesn't really affect my decision, but you're entitled to know uh, because I didn't read it. Um, a, a viewer, his name is Martin from New Mexico, uh, said, I am a retired casualty insurance loss control services uh, with an emphasis on pre-loss property safety inspections. In New Mexico, we aren't in New Mexico, uh, statutes, an insurance company is fully entitled to all physical property ownership rights upon full payment of claims regarding said physical property. I presume statutes in Michigan and other states are similar. The most likely scenario is the insurance company transferred the vehicle to itself to preserve their rights subsequent to paying a claim proffered by the previous owner. The person who owned the motorcycle, it was stolen and they made it a claim with their insurance company and they paid for it. And when the vehicle was recovered, uh, the insurance company had taken the title to it. That's and right. the insurance now, absent that, Mr. Pontius, in order for you to get that bike out of impound, you have had to pay as of that date, August 7th, $3,638.80. Uh, this company paid the impound, uh, had the vehicle uh, taken, and presumably sold at auction. I wasn't able to get the bike out no matter what. There was a police hold on it. Yes, because it was stolen. So because you're certainly going to have a right well. to appeal this, but I agree with Mr. Roberts. You don't even have standing to bring this action because you're not the titled holder of the property. I find that the police agency complied with the procedures established for the processing of abandoned vehicles under the statute 257252A. B and D. It is ordered that no refund of charges shall be made. The vehicle has been redeemed. Yeah. I was never given the opportunity to redeem the vehicle. And why why till that day? Why till why till the seventh? Because that's the day they picked it up. Yeah. That's the day. What about the day that the day after when I was claiming the motorcycle as mine? Here I am but nobody would listen to me and I couldn't get it out because there was a police hold on it. Nobody would listen to you because you didn't have a title for it. But I have a bill of sale. Uh, I bought the property. I don't care. I have a bill of sale is somebody something could write on the back of a napkin. Well, I'm not going to register my vehicle with the state. Well, um, so you're not the owner of it, according to the state. Well, so uh, right. I find that the police, it. well, you can certainly appeal it. Uh, I will. The, the complete uh, Deputy Britton, uh, the sheriff, the uh, undersheriff, um, went the extra mile contacting Detroit directly. Mr. Roberts does what he does. He comes and answers the call, impounds the vehicle, 
gives notice to the title holder. The title holder came and redeemed it. And you I think are it's also funny that everything that everybody's telling me, I can't verify. Fine. You want to cut me off? Have a good day. Well, no, I'm not going to cut you off, but there's nothing else to say about it. You didn't have the title. The police did. I don't did need the title. The title. The if I wanted to make the title, out of you it. don't need the title. To, you need the title to own it. I'm not going to argue with anymore. I, I ruled in Do uh, I need their the title behalf. To hold my pouch? You can appeal it, and I will uh, enter the order today. Mr. Roberts, thank you for being here. Uh, everyone else, you're all good to go. And uh, I'll send you a copy of that order, Mr. Pontius. I disagree and I don't accept it, but. All right, well, you don't have to. Uh, Deputy Britton, you had a question? Yeah, um, when this is done, can I go into a breakout room with Mr. Pontius so I can give him an update on the uh, criminal side of this? If that's yes. okay with you, Mr. Yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pontius, you would like to talk to the officer? Yes, I would. I'd like to apologize to her for, uh, I was just trying to get some information. And uh, I, I, I just want to apologize to you for bringing you in like this. You're okay. We can talk no, in the breakout I'm... session All and right. I'll get an update on that side. Yeah. All right. Just click join. Mr. Roberts, thank you for your help. At some yep. point, I'll stop out and visit your new uh, office. Sure. All right. You need a title, you need a title, you need a title. Um, at this point, no one's left holding the bag regarding the finances of this because the tow and storage has been paid for by the insurance company. All right, that completes our record. I'm gonna stop the live feed.